they have the biggest testicles relative to body size of any male on the planet. Hey everyone, Slayer here to introduce Nasty and Friends from BDC Studios, a podcast where two friends who met in the Army Reserves get together and talk about shit. One's a firefighter and the other has a funny laugh. So sit back, get rid of your kids, and hold on to your because it's about to get nasty, friends. Welcome to Nasty and Friends with Pack Nasty and Spicy Motherfucking Brown. Nasty and Friends Podcast, Season 3, QC7. Your heroes are back doing hero shit. And I'm not going to lie, it's fucking great to be back in the virtual BDC studios. We're going to talk about food. We're going to talk about shows. Shit, we're going to even answer some questions because we've had some in our email address, which is nastyandfriends at gmail.com. So keep sending them in, and we'll get to it. You know me. I'm Pat Massing, and on the other end of the quarantine call is Daddy Fat Sack himself, <laughs> Spicy Brown. And, brother, it's fucking great to be back with you. How the hell you been, man? Dude, I've been I've been pretty good. And I, I got to stop you, man, because that was one of the best intros <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. Oh, shit. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm like, I'm just sitting back because I'm a fan. I'm a fan, too. <laughs> Hell, yeah. And I'm like, you're just fucking crushing it right now. And then you're like, oh, I got to talk. I got. How am I going to follow that shit? <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you, just, you just know I get pumped up for these, man. It's been forever. Well, I'm, so. I'm, I'm pretty pumped up, too, man. And 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 it, it it's surprising. Uh, it is great to be back in the virtual BDC studio. It's surprising that this is quarantine call number seven. Yeah, I can't back, fucking believe it. I mean, this all started back in March. We figured by July it'd be back to cupcakes and blowjobs and everything. <laughs> the way it, it's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, when we first when we first decided to do quarantine calls, we're like, what? We got what? Two, three, maybe yeah. at most. You know? <laughs> oh, we were wrong. Yeah, and it's not like we're doing these weekly. I think it's been like it's been well over a month since we uploaded our last one. And I think yeah, it, was, I it was like June thirteenth, I think. So, and yeah. as of recording this, um, what's today? July twenty fourth. Yeah, twenty fourth. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's fucking crazy, man. But you know, world's crazy, and uh, you know, we're just in here fucking at Mother Nature's will. So we do what we do. I mean, we do what we do for you guys. Engage hero mode. <laughs> that, that's what we're doing. You know what I mean? Lock, cock, ready to rock. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Season three, QC7. We're back in virtual BDC studios. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I want to get into. Again, intro, fucking tremendous, dude. Uh, I got to move forward from that. Like, I got to keep, I got to keep pressing <laughs> on. I was impressed, man. It was solid. Uh, so I, we just got done eating, and we did some chicken tiki marsala. That's what we did for oh. dinner. That's a mouthful. That sounds Which, fantastic. <laughs> it was pretty good, pretty spicy, and it's light because, of course, it's like 91 degrees again outside. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we had that tonight, which we don't cook often. Can't, that was a, that's a canvas meal. Oh, okay. That's not something I specialize in. I am doing a prime rib on Sunday for my daughter's birthday, which mm. is tomorrow. Oh, that's great. How old is she going to be, if you don't mind me asking her, putting she's it out be, there on the cast? So. No, she, yeah, she's going to be 15. Oh, dude, that's great. Yeah. Fucking 15. That's ins- I bet it's, like, really insane for you. Oh, it's crazy, man. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's just amazing how how time flies, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and she hasn't been able to be doing the crewing, right? No, she hasn't. So she hasn't. She's big in the crew, which is rowing at her school. Mm-hmm. She got big into that this season. She's one of the best uh, members on her team, and – Last year she set records for freshmen. Right, I remember you. you remember you yeah. telling us that. So before she was interested in being, a mar- I always laugh when I say this, uh, a marine biologist. <laughs> right, this was one of my favorite moments on podcast history. Like what you were saying, like yeah. do you remember like what you had said originally when we were talking. Like because I believe it was a podcast when uh, this degenerate was on with us. I think <laughs> he's so. like, yes, yeah, she like she's young. She doesn't know this world's fucked already. But I can't trust <laughs> her dreams. And like yeah. I, we talk about that moment often, man. It's oh, it's one of oh, my yeah. all time favorite podcast moments. So anytime you bring it up, like that's what my head goes to. And uh, oh I agree. yeah, I laugh as well. Plus, you know, I'm a big Seinfeld fan, so the marine biologist is my favorite 
episode of Seinfeld. Oh so yeah, I always had that little kick too as well. So that episode is that episode is tremendous, and mm-hmm. that's the thing: young people have hope. They have a. Uh, yeah, it's just it's it's good to be around young people. Like when we had Tarzan, remember when we had uh, Tarzan on that podcast? Yeah, like he was uh, just a young man, young young college man, <laughs> ready. out there slinging dick like a savage. Out there slinging dick, he has the world by his by his fucking nuts. You know what I mean? And then it's like uh, everybody else we have on the show, they're done. They're they've <laughs> peaked already. Some of them peaked in high school. A lot of them are degenerates. So when we get around people who have a future, it's like, wow, man, good luck. It's probably not going to turn out. But yeah, yeah it's but nice. This is nice to see that gleam in the eye where life hasn't beat it out of them yet. You know? Yeah, and that's beautiful. And that, Gives you hope a little bit, just a little bit of like you know, fresh of breath air, just just a absolutely. little bit. And then it's like with the it's like with the kids and uh, with with and I don't want to get too political, but with like the Black Lives Matter movement mm-hmm. and with protests and stuff like that. And I feel like at, at my age, you know, I'm like, no, we're fucked. Like, this is <laughs> it. Like, it, America's kind of racist, and it's been like that forever. That's, <laughs> okay, America's built on racism, and it's going to be – it's just going to be like that. And young people are like, that's fucking dumb. Let's change it. Let's do something. And I was like, oh, I, I guess we could try that. I don't know. I just right. figured it's worth – We'll just fucking dig in and do our best. Yeah, yeah. nobody's tried it ever, you know, <laughs> yeah. in, in history at mm-hmm. all. I mean, just ask all the dead people that have been murdered for it. <laughs> yeah. So my daughter was into – she's big in the crew. She's still big into it. And, her, you know, last year – or yeah, last year she's like – she was thinking about going to the University of Miami and then to be a marine biologist, you know. And I said, yeah, that's – you know, you still got time, but whatever you want to do, I'm going to support you. And uh, now she got big into row, and she did a week at uh, Princeton University. <clears throat> so gangster, man. Yeah, and uh, she really enjoyed it, and she did well. And she says her numbers that she puts up now are all, as a freshman are already there, like they're good enough to be on the team. Hell yeah. But I'm pretty sure there's no marine biologists at Princeton. So. <laughs> Again, <laughs> no, she's they're gonna all be smarter a, than that. <laughs> they're smarter than that. They're all uh, – so she's going to be a sophomore. We'll see how she does. But she hasn't rowed for four months because of the quarantine and all that stuff. But we, we have a row machine at the at the gym at home. So she's been she's, she's been going hard, dude. Dude, that's great, man. you got to yeah. stay in shape. And the fact that, like, you know, you know she's into it, especially if she's going to be doing it in the offseason and shit. So that's fucking – that's fantastic. But happy birthday to your daughter, man. That's great. Fifteen. You know, I remember that age. It wasn't too far back for me, yeah. I guess. But uh, that should be a fun age. So I'm, I'm glad that she at least got to come back and hang out with you guys this summer because you weren't sure there for a while, right? Well, the, the, I, I was dead set on it. And uh, the, the alternative would have been to drive to Philly and then drive back, which would have been a week probably. Yeah. Just, just straight, just straight driving, and Ooh. it would have been a week versus one hour and a half one way flight to where we live. Right. So it worked out. It, no matter what, if I would have had to drive, I would have done it. But I definitely one and a half hour flight versus seven six days of driving. But she's having a good time. Uh, we've been we started learning how to drive. She started learning how to drive last summer. And we continued, uh, and she's been back. And she's doing she's doing pretty well. She's starting to be on. Bigger streets, you know, and like normal streets, no interstate or highway yet. But uh, yeah, she's doing really well, and she's learning to she's learning to drive in a truck, which is, <laughs> in a pickup truck, which is pretty good because when she gets her first car, whenever that is. Yeah, yeah. If you learn something big, like especially yeah. to like parallel park, back up, and all oh, that. Oh yeah. Once you get into a car, it's easy peasy. It'll be easy peasy. Mm-hmm. But uh. Yeah, no, she's having a great time. She's just a really good kid. So we're having some friends and family over uh, tomorrow, and we're just going to do pizza and hang out. We just got a new cornhole set that somebody local makes them, so we bought one. And it's going to be like 95 degrees, but we're still going to try to <laughs> – Hell yeah. Yeah, what's on, the, what's on the set? Like, what's on the board? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's just a design. Oh, okay. Right so it's like dark wood, light wood, and some triangles. We didn't really want like a Husker one or 
sports yeah. teams, just some design. So it's you know, pretty... it'd be like like a monkey bending over, and you know the butt holes, the hole that you the hole that in or something. That's a great idea. We, I mean, we could add that to that. Maybe I'm not an artist. <laughs> I figure, I love cornhole or bago or whatever the fuck you want to call it, man. It's one of my favorite yeah, quote unquote yard games or whatever. Yeah, and we haven't had we haven't had a set. We got some friends that have it, but now we do. So mm-hmm. uh, we'll have some people over tomorrow, and hopefully we'll play a little bit. It'll be hop up. Yeah, I, I do love the I love the game as well. How's your summer been treating you? It's been going going well. Uh, you know, since last time we got together, there was Fourth of July. We did go back home and did our normal Fourth of July. Um, obviously, there wasn't as many people there with the Rona, which yeah. is nice. But we always do it at my grandpa's lake. Um, it's pretty easy to social distance out there, and it was hot as shit, which is I love the heat. So um, you know, I, I never complain about it. So I enjoyed it. Um, but we're just doing good, man. Boys are getting bigger. Uh, you know, Dax is coming into his own and curly haired little fuck and uh you know grayson's you know back talking a ton which has always been fun but yeah we're doing good man jpac moved into their new office so she's been putting in unreal hours uh yeah. just trying to get it set up uh just last weekend on friday and saturday i helped them move and so that was a lot of going up and down two flights of stairs like a hundred times with a bunch of boxes so that was a nice workout and yeah yeah, yeah man just been living and just you know, hoping this shit eventually blows over. There's a, I mean, it's not going to go anywhere until there's a vaccine because apparently we can't get our shit together. But, no. uh, you know, it is what it is. Everybody that I know has been staying safe for the most part or at least trying to. So mm-hmm. just doing doing well, man, and uh, join these quarantine calls, wanting to get into the new BDC studios at some point and start rolling out normal episodes because, Man, we got fucking guests lined up and shit like that. We got so many stories to talk about, so much shit's happened that uh that we're just saving until we get back together in person, which will happen at some point. So it will I know happen. I know people are enjoying these quarantine calls. I've had a few people reach out and you know, they're loving them and glad we're doing them and I'm glad we're doing them as well, as always. So Hell yeah, man. Yeah, super pumped. I'm glad people like the quarantine calls. Uh, it's it, we're, it's still a quarantine call. I think most places have places that are open, but uh, yeah, I think it's still it's still not the same. Things aren't the same. Right. And uh, I want to get into some of that. Yeah, but I, I I don't want to move away from food yet because I need okay. some. I need I need some help. So so I got this I got this prime rib recipe that it's like I told you before. It's perfect. I'm not going to ever fuck with it. I think right. about smoking a prime rib or doing something else. The recipe I have that we use at work, every time it's a holiday, uh, Easter's, we've done it on Christmases. I do it at home. It's perfect. But I have the, uh, I got the ribs, and I've never, uh, you know, so when you get the rib roast, and if it's bone in, I always ask the butcher to cut that, cut the bones out. And then they tie it on there with the twine. And I don't, I've cooked it on there once and ate it, and I did not. <laughs> Like, because I'm not a beef rib guy. So if anybody out there that's listening, I talked to Vito about it. I talked to Long about it. Uh, if you have a way that I should prepare, and it's only like four bones uh, with the meat in it, uh, ribs. If anybody has any ideas, hit me up because I'm going to do the prime rib. But then I also want to do that section of ribs. Some different yeah, way. that's great. And as everybody knows, this is a cooking show. So if you sure. get us like a solid ass recipe, man, we'll share it with everybody else if you don't mind. But Absolutely. yeah, I've Absolutely. never even cooked a prime rib ever. Um, so I have no idea. But I definitely want to like kind of figure out or know like what people tell you and like how you end up doing it. Because yeah, you don't ever want to waste that meat um, no. at all. But if you could find a bomb ass way to do it, and you already got a bomb yeah. ass recipe for the prime rib just to oh add, add that onto it. Fuck. Take it to the next level, doc. Dude, next time I'm telling you, next time you have something like a special occasion, you want to cook something, get a rib roast, hit me up. I will give you, I will walk you through the recipe. It's easy. As long as you have a solid internal thermometer, you can't fuck it up and it's going to be the best prime rib you've ever had in, in oh yeah yeah we'll do it for sure i definitely want to try it at some point so one of the one of these times when you come over maybe i'll maybe i'll do one but <laughs> uh but i love it man other than that i haven't really been fucking around too much it's been so hot i got a brisket in my deep freeze i got a pork butt in my deep freeze i got mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff uh i just i haven't been doing anything out of the ordinary nothing nothing to report on the on the qc7 i hear you there um i've been we've been switching up our steaks a little bit so we've been doing like the reverse sear a lot 
but I've yeah, just yeah. been reverse searing them on on the pellet grill themselves. So pull them, okay. crank it up. Uh, but we've been deciding just because I'm like, it just takes so long for it to get up to heat and just throwing it back on there. And I know a lot of people do the reverse sear on the cast iron. And so we just decided to do that. And I'm telling you, I'll probably never do it any other way. So um, we just cook up. Uh, our steaks about like 10, 15 degrees below like what we want. Like, so okay. medium rare, whatever that temp is, I can never remember. I always have to look it up. Um, and then once they're done, we pull it. And then I put in like a, probably like one tablespoon of like butter in the cast iron, get that mm. high heat and throw the steak on there like two to three minutes each side and fucking nice let it rest. Yeah. Yeah. Let it rest and cut into it, man. And, it's a lot quicker. You don't have to fucking wait for the pellet smoker to get up to temp yeah. to do it. And um, I'm really enjoying that a lot, a lot better that way. So, and j Pags loves it. The boys love it. So that's, that's how we've been doing our steaks. And we cooked some steaks. I think I sent you a picture of it. The other day we did some T-bones and then we did some. Yeah, uh, you did. Um, caramelized onions on top of it. <laughs> Ooh, that fucking turned out great. Uh, Vito gave me that recipe. You just cook some onions down and you put, I think it's brown sugar, garlic salt, and yeah. uh, Worcestershire sauce in it and cook it down until they become caramelized. And, oh, man, it's the fucking best. It's just like, it just hits your soul, you know what I mean? Oh, my God. <laughs> you, you get it on there, and it's it's super simple. It's like, you know when they're done. Um, like, it takes a little bit. The onions do, they take a while to get to that point. But we timed it out to right about, uh, you know, we start cooking the onions and we throw the steaks on at the exact same time and about the time they're ready to come off the onions are done pull the steaks and then fucking reverse serum and then it's it's go time so we got it timed out perfect yeah and it's it's wonderful i put a picture up on the gram uh, i can you know what i should uh after this i'll um or after we post this episode i'll put that steak up on the nasty and friends instagram just okay. uh since we're talking about it but okay. yeah yeah and then fucking phenomenal. yeah and i'll see if canis has a picture of one of the last prime ribs uh we've done she's yeah. on some page like a local one <laughs> so uh she throws pictures of food on there when it looks nah, dude i love steak and i remember seeing the picture of that t-bone it looked fucking tremendous i don't ever sear steaks inside because my fan just isn't my exhaust fan isn't that good and right it'll smoke up the whole upper floors but uh when that wop fuck veto came over remember that <laughs> oh yeah and we and we did those tri-tips mm-hmm. he did those onions use red onions and to me that was a game changer because i've yeah. only used sweet yellow onions when i when i do onions and mushrooms for steaks the red onion was so fucking good man mm-hmm. i would have never thought to do that and <clears throat> yeah dude yeah Maybe. he doesn't do a lot of things great but cooking's one of them you know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no he's great man anytime i ever have like a smoky question or food question it's nice text him Call him. And he loves it too, man. He loves teaching. And um, he actually just emailed me. Have you ever heard of a white barbecue sauce? No. Yeah, same. And he never either. He just happened to come across it. And uh, he sent me the recipe. I'll send it to you. We have not made it yet. Okay. Um, and he said he made it. It fucking. He says it's fantastic on chicken, and it was great on deer steaks as well. So I'll I'll send it to you, and you can make some up and and see uh, see how you like it. But uh, he says it was absolutely phenomenal. And and he said anybody that he's ever talked to has not heard of it either. And I can't remember where he said he came across. It's just somewhere on the interwebs. But I'm pretty pumped to try that uh, sometime in the near future as well. Well, I doubt I'll try it because it sounds racist. <laughs> Yeah. What's the, what's the base? What do they use for the base? Uh, I don't know, man. Let most barbecue it. sauces are like a ketchup or vinegar. Right. Uh, uh, I don't know let me, what. Let me jump right into my email here. He just sent it not long ago. So it's uh, so there's mayo, apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, uh, Dijon mustard, uh, mustard powder, <clears throat> um, okay. kosher salt if you prefer it. Uh, mm-hmm. cayenne pepper, powdered garlic, horseradish, prepared horseradish, and mm-hmm. uh, black pepper. Why, why wouldn't it be white pepper? <laughs> no <laughs> idea. This is what it says. <laughs> that was the only ingredient I guessed other than mayo, white pepper. And then, yeah. Fuck. Well, yeah, it, think, sounds, like, it, does sound, it does sound really good, dude. Yeah, yeah. Let me know well, how pretty, it is. I'm pretty pumped. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, like I said, I'll uh, I'll send it to you, like, with all the measurements and shit that he has in it. But, again, he said it yeah, turned out sure. great, so I'm pumped to try it. 
and I'm a big horseradish guy too, man. Like when when I do the prime rib, I'll definitely throw some horseradish and some aju on there. God damn, dude! Now I'm getting hungry. I just ate. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Yeah. Oh yeah. So so today I was supposed to go to a. So tonight we have a there's a wedding. Mm-hmm. We got some friends getting married tonight, and then I have another friend who's having a fortieth a surprise fortieth birthday party. So we were going to try to get to both of those. And then as the week progressed and the way COVID just seems to be ramping up fucking everywhere, we decided to, to not go. Yeah, that's probably smart, man, which sucks because <laughs> it's like you, yeah, you want to go do all this shit and you don't know how long it's going to last. I mean, it could be a couple yeah. of years. I mean, it could be six months. I mean, the safest bet definitely is not – you know, yeah. like to get around people. We've been traveling a little bit more than, you know, probably what we should, but we've just been yeah. going back home and I like reach out to my mom, like, Hey, how are you feeling the last couple of weeks? Yeah. You know, which again, you know, there's a ton of people asymptomatic and it's probably still not the smartest thing to do, but right. you know, we try to keep it to people that we've been seeing and shit like that. Right. So. Right. And I got some other friends going cause he's a, a firefighter mm-hmm. and uh, he's a good dude. He's a good buddy of mine. <clears throat> He was in the he was in the Marine Corps before that, and it was local, like the Marine Reserve. So he's got a ton of Marine buddies, and uh, so we were all set to go. And then, like earlier in the week, we we're supposed to take family pictures, and our photographer was exposed to COVID. Yeah, had to bail. Right. Yeah. A couple of days later, Camus was supposed to have like a work dinner party kind of thing, canceled because of COVID. And I'm like, ah. So the the thing is, I I was down to go, and then I was gonna try to make the fortieth surprise birthday party because that's a big deal. And then, t- so but tomorrow is my daughter's birthday. My mom's coming, sister, her kids, my my daughter's friends, one of my nieces uh, is like a, I don't know, it would it would be compromised. She cannot get this. Right. So after thinking about it, if it was the other way around, I would go to the party and then. Whatever, but I I don't want to go to a party and it's at a a big bar in the city I live in. Uh, they got a private room, but it's going to be a fuck ton of people there, Damn. and I don't want to see uh, be around a group of that many people because I haven't been anywhere like that. You know what I mean? Right. We've been to restaurants, we've been to stores, but I haven't been to like a bar. Yeah, and you've been social distancing and shit like that, and you already come in yeah. close contact with it anyway with your work. So yeah. So I don't want to have this party tomorrow and expose my mom and my daughter and her friends. And then like three days later, get a call like, oh, somebody at my table tested positive. And then I got to call all these people's parents. Right. Take and out then, House the Brown fan yeah. out just because you yeah. want to afford his birthday party. For sure. Like, hey, yeah, hey, hey mom, uh, you might have COVID now. Cause... So and here's the thing. And so and this happened after the last. This happened after QC, QC6. I Tested positive for COVID. I had the COVID. Oh, shit. I had yeah, the yeah, yeah. You told me that fucking bitch. Yeah, because that last yeah. time it was like the nasties. No, you left off and you tested negative for it. Correct. So like you had told that on QC6 that everything was negative, which you thought yep. was super weird because like everybody like at your firehouse is getting it except for like yeah. you and like one other person. And Correct. I think that's where the story left off. Yeah. So so uh, we had that last set at work. This was the very beginning of June, I believe. It was a shit set. It was hot as fuck. We were busy. Uh, 95 degree days. It was, an, it was awful. I, I'm trying to drink as much water as possible. I think we had some fires. We had a ton of COVID calls. We had all this shit going. So then uh, I take a break. We go to the ranch five hours away. We kayak. And then the next morning, the group text is, hey, I, I feel like I feel shitty. I, I got tested today. I'm quarantining. Uh, so then that next morning, one of the people in my group text out of the 10 of us got their test back positive. We bounce out of, we bounce out of the ranch. We haven't seen Camus's folks since December because of the COVID. And now I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? The one weekend I go there, I possibly infected them. They're in their seventies. Yeah. And so they're we, on a ranch, not near anybody, not near anybody, man. It's a 3,000-acre ranch. They haven't left. They, I mean, they've been to the town, but they haven't been, like, here, you know. And right. So we bounce. We're cleaning as we go. I get tested on the way home five hours later. Get tested. Come back negative. 
the city tells me, the doctor tells me, uh, well, you should still isolate for 10 days, okay? I said, okay. I tell my work. They say, well, because we, we're not really going by CDC guidelines because of manpower issues. So I take the first day off, go back the second day. At this point, five or six people tested positive that I was around out of 10. So then one of the guys had zero symptoms. <clears throat> that second day I go back to shift, he gets his, they tell him, he's like, I have no symptoms, zero. He had zero. He was the only one out of seven of us. He had no symptoms whatsoever. He was still waiting on his test results. For some reason, mine came back a day later. I've taken three so far. They've all came back within probably 36 hours. Uh, his took like four or five days. He goes back to work. That day, he gets his test results back. It's positive. So now yeah. you have all these guys from different stations because all, seven other people from my station are home on COVID. Right, time. right. <clears throat> so they got to shut everything down, they go outside. People go home. They clean the station. And then uh, I start <laughs> – so then i feeling like shit that day, right? Uh, busy day. It's hot. I, I, stay, I stay at work because I'm like, well, I tested negative. I think I got some allergies. I just don't feel right. I feel tired. Mm -hmm. uh, test the next day start feeling real shitty, get my results back the next day, and I'm positive. Oh. <laughs> so at that point, you know, I tell the city, I tell everybody, like, hey, I was, at, <laughs> I was just at work yesterday, and I tested positive. Uh, so I go on my quarantine. And at this point, I had stopped isolating from Camus. You know, I isolated. I slept in a different room. But after I got my negative test result, I was like, okay, well, fuck, it's business as usual. Yeah. I'm like, well, at this point, it doesn't make sense to not sleep in the same do anything if we've been around right. each other for the last yeah, week. Yeah, got to get back, put that face in the booty again. Yeah, yeah. It's ass eating season just because <laughs> quarantine time. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So, COVID so, and heat does not shut down ass eating season, people. Yeah. So I had, I tested positive for COVID. My symptoms were pretty mild. I never had a fever the whole time. So I had a sore throat. I had a headache real bad one day, and I felt weak. I felt pretty weak. But then shortly after my positive test, I don't know if it was the day after or the next day, I started having kidney pain on both sides of my back, and then I started having blood in my urine. Fuck. At that point, when you first started testing blood, obviously you already knew you were positive. Were you like, fuck, this is it? Like, yeah. It, like, how, how were you mentally? I, I was really nervous. Uh, mm -hmm. I was pretty nervous. I started doing research because uh, I didn't know it affected the kidneys. Turns out it does. It does uh, affect kidneys. So at first, I was like, well, maybe it's a kidney stone. I've never had a kidney stone or anything like that. And the pain wasn't, when I hear about kidney stones and I research kidney stones, the pain's excruciating. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that. So I quit, drink, I quit drinking. Around, well, when I started feeling shit, I quit drinking. Right. Now I started drinking a ton, ton of water. I didn't tell my wife because I know she, wives worry. Yeah. She would have made me go to the hospital. I did not want to call the hospital and say, hey, I have COVID. I need to come to the hospital. They'd be like, don't fucking come to the hospital. I didn't want the union finding out and fucking, they were already making meals for people on COVID leave. And I didn't want to worry anybody. I didn't want to go to the hospital. Uh, so I didn't tell her. So for three days, um, pissing blood. And, and one of the, I remember one time I was in the shower and I pissed in the shower and it was dark red. I mean, Jesus. it was. It was always like the worst in the morning, and then if I if I did, I was in a couple, one the first or the second night, I remember going to bed at night and being like, well, hopefully I fucking wake up in the morning. You God damn, that's not good, man. No, it's not good. And, yeah, and, trust and, me, and, people don't want just me on this goddamn podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I I eventually got better, and I didn't tell anybody this was going on. I didn't want anybody to worry. If I figured if I fucking die, I'm going to die, but uh, I didn't want to worry anybody. What's up, Tegan? So then I got better, and then I told people what was happening. And I was like, well, what the fuck didn't you tell me that? I was like, well, I didn't want you to worry. You want me to go to the hospital? She's like, yeah, of course. Yeah, because that's what normal people do. <laughs> so then, so out of the, so after what happened to us, I've been telling people, because there's people that are like, oh, COVID's not that bad, or uh, you know, it's not real or certain things like that out of seven of us. And now it's all over the city. 
for police and fire. Every we get updates every day. Every like today, I think three firefighters tested positive in different stations in the city. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them are ones and twos, but the station I'm in, out of the 26 stations we have, uh, we've got one of the oldest stations, and 10 of us sleep in the same room. Versus a lot of the newer stations, you have your own like room. Right, so it's a lot so easier. To, it's like, a lot easier to spread. Yeah. We di- we didn't we we don't know where it came from, who brought it in. We have our our guesses. We all pretty much have our the same guess, but you can't prove it. But uh, we on runs we're so protected. We wear so much protective clothing. So somebody we think brought it in from home, and it just spread with us living in the same house, ten of us, and sleeping in the same room and eating in the same kitchen. So, but out of seven of us just at my station on my shift, like I said, the one guy, no symptoms the whole time. And we had one guy who uh, ended up going to the hospital because OT stats were down at like 85. He felt really weak. He couldn't, had difficulty breathing. He went to the hospital. He lost about 20 pounds, and it's probably a month and a half later. He's not back to full duty. Jesus. And he's, and so, I, and out of the, seven of us that got it we're in pretty decent shape i mean yeah. we're, we're firefighters so it's not like we don't do active stuff and then another the guy that is the most fit and he's he's my captain on the truck andy he does jujitsu he works out every day he actually cares about his body and he eats healthy uh he got sick and he couldn't uh barely function like he said he would take a shower within one minute he got dizzy he would have to sit down he lost about 10 pounds, and he was really sick. He was close to going to the hospital. Everybody else was kind of in between. Uh, without my kidney stuff, it would have just been like a, a tough cold with the sore throat and cough. Right. But the kidney stuff, and now I have to, I'm have to. i going to get a physical because I don't know if I have a lot of people. And then we had another guy uh, who had it. His symptoms were fever, chills. All, a lot of us had different symptoms. He went back to work. The first fire he made collapsed, got, went to the hospital via ambulance, and they said he has scars in his lungs, and he's not fully healed from the COVID. He has, like, water or something in his lungs from the COVID. So uh, a lot of us had different uh, symptoms, and a lot of us had different variations or, or, or levels of how bad it affected us. But all seven of us are healthy, you know, for firefighters, uh, so after this, I, I did think, well, you know, before this, I knew I was going to get the Rona, right? Right. Because I'm around it. That's my job. I'm around uh, Rona patients. We've had Rona patients die. We're constantly around it, especially the part of town, town I live in when there's three meatpacking plants and the projects and the homeless shelter, like we're, we're exposed to it constantly. So I knew I was going to get it, but I figured when I got it, it wasn't going to be that bad because I'm a young, semi young, healthy guy. Uh, after what happened to the seven of us, I'm like, this is, it's bad. Right. Anybody who's older or anybody who has a problem or diabetes or any kind of health condition, it could be really, really bad. So, And that's where- crazy <laughs> shit, man, because you just never know. Like, I mean, honestly, like, I probably could have had it and just never have known. Right. Um, you know, you thought maybe you had already had it previously and you were okay. And so yeah. it's just, like, the way that it affects people. And you just don't want to be that one person that no. – like, you know, that it, like, puts you down or kills you because there's been, like, what, over, what's the death toll, 100,000 or whatever? Like 140,000 people, yeah. Yeah, we, we, yeah. Got, we got a friend, we got we got uh, a couple that we hang out with, and they had a death in their family from COVID. Fuck, oh, man. So, I just it's hope a real they deal. Like a, yeah, they can get a vaccine and shit for yeah. it. But, man, I'm fucking glad you're okay, man. Like, I know we had talked, uh, not on the podcast, you had told me that story, and, I was yeah. fucking shitting myself, man. I'm glad that you're okay because you just never know, especially no. once a kid you start going down, man. That is fucking scary shit. And I, you know, the thing is, I say, you know, like you should tell people, but if that was me, I mean, we both know I probably would have played it the exact same fucking way. <laughs> oh, right, um, yeah. But it's easy yeah. to say, oh, just go get checked out, and I don't want any kind of attention or whatever. I, I, in, 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 in my head, though, too, I was like, okay, this is this isn't good. You know what I mean? But I right. feel okay. You know what I mean? If and and I would tell myself, okay, if 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 I feel worse tomorrow, I'll probably go get checked out. If I feel even a little bit better tomorrow, you know, I'll just keep. And every day I felt a little bit better. And after three mm-hmm. or four days, I was 100. percent You know, back to 
to normal. But if I would have started getting worse, or if, yeah, you know, I would have for sure did it. But at that point, yeah. I just figured. Just try to weather the storm like what you can. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, when you can, if you can get out on the other side, because it doesn't sound like, I mean, yes, it was definitely bad, but it doesn't sound the duration of the shittiness for you wasn't right. that long, right? It's like, what, maybe a day or two before you started turning the corner to be good? Is that about right? Or was it? No, like- it, was, it, it, was, it was longer than that. But <clears throat> we, it, it, I mean, I had like the cough, the sore throat, the tiredness was right. probably my biggest. Uh, my biggest symptom was just being lethargic, you know, and then right. the kidney stuff was about three, three and a half days. Okay, yeah. So, like, that's the part, because obviously, I mean, there's, I mean, being sore and, like, you know, like, yeah. fucking, like, sore throat, all that other shit, like, that is just, like, a common cold. Like, you could fight through that, but the kidney oh, right. was what I was talking about for yeah, sure. Yeah, and, and, oh, and some of the guys that had it, another, <laughs> we call it another furlough, like, another vacation, yeah, they had like a cold, cold-like symptoms, and they had another two weeks off. They couldn't go anywhere. The union was bringing us food, but for some people, it was just like, "All right, you're stuck at home again." But it's a, it's a June, it's a June furlough. God but, damn. No, it, it's scary, man. And I tell people that because there's even pe- there's people I know still that are on like Twitter and shit, and they're like, oh, "I don't understand why I got to wear a mask and and uh, just wear a fucking mask." I yeah. do feel like uh, we maybe it's tough to keep shit shut down. I know, I know it's tough to do, and I maybe we opened up things too soon, but I feel like if people, if we would have opened stuff up, because you have to, because people are starving, and we've got one what twelve hundred dollars stimulus check in the last fucking four months, yeah. you have to let people make money. And if, if I think if we opened up, but people were still responsible and they wore masks and they still tried to social distance and they didn't like go into packed like wedding receptions or churches or whatever, mm-hmm. I think we'd be in a different spot. But we opened up, and then people just thought it was done, and then uh, hospitals are overwhelmed. And, and I get into arguments with people, and they're like, it's just a 1% you know, fatality rate. And it's like, well, that's 1%. That's still a fuck ton of people. But I said, look, at, it's affecting people. Like, my, I, I'm going to get a physical the end of August. And my kidneys might be fucked up. My buddy's lungs might be fucked up. We don't yeah. know what the long-term effects That's are. Like and they're, forever. And in, in, in Texas and other places, ICUs are filling up. The, the, the 1% fatality rate, that's still a large number. But what about all the people who are fucked up, who are in the hospital now, or who have long-term effects from this? No. Like, uh, peop- I think people are selfish. It's such a shitty time for America because uh, I don't understand the mask thing. I don't understand why that's controversial. Just where it's not. And maybe if people thought the mask was for them, they would think different. But since it's to protect right. other people, I think maybe they're like, fuck other people. Fuck that old lady. I don't know her. Yeah. But really, that's somebody's grandma. She's like, <laughs> she's at Walmart at the pharmacy getting meds. And you're, you know, I just don't understand it. Like, you got people out there every fuck, and I'm not trying to get too political. We'll change the subject in a second. But you have people that, like you, you know, you served in the Army. Uh you have people out there that do whatever they can for the country. And then uh, people that die in war, you got your cops, firefighters, nurses, doctors, and then you have people that can't wear a fucking mask when they go into Walmart because that's too much that for them to do for the country. It's just, it's, it's crazy to me. I don't, I don't understand it. It's not that hard, man. I wear a mask like 14 hours a day at work. And we, have <laughs> right. shitty, we have shitty AC, and then when we go outside, we wear the N95 mask plus the surgical mask. I know it sucks, man, but if you go to Walmart for 10 minutes to pick something up, wear a mask because those old ladies in there, they might die from this. Don't be selfish. So That's all I got to say about that, man. Hey, man, it <laughs> hit you personally, man. You know, first uh... – I almost said first world problems. It's definitely not first world problems. Uh, first person perspective, man. Like, yeah, if you're, and I'm right there with you, man. And, we, you know, we could talk about all that. I'm sure people are probably tired of hearing about it. But I think it's important to get your story out there and let people know that. I let people uh, know. You know, shit could have been real bad. You know, nasty friends could have been down to just nasty, and that would not have been good. <laughs> so um, I'm definitely fucking glad that you that you made it through and hope you're still staying safe. And I love you, Doc. Oh, I love so, you too, bro. Um, so let's get to um, – well, let's talk about some shows. So I know that you had finished – last time we talked, you were trucking through Community and you were getting through Dexter. Um, yes, sir. I know where you are at with both of them. Why don't you let okay. the Nasties know uh, where you're at, and then I can jump into what I'm watching. 
Awesome. Okay. So, yeah. So, Dexter was a show that me and my wife were watching, and it was fucking awesome. I mean, uh, it was a great show, <clears throat> and it was something something to do, you know what I mean? During, <laughs> I had two vacations and then a COVID leave furlough. <laughs> In the last three months, well, I had tons of time where I couldn't even leave the house kind of thing. Right. So we were crushing it. We do one or two episodes a day. Sometimes we'd get through uh, more if it was a, a weekend and we didn't have anything going on. So I really enjoyed Dexter. Uh, I talked to uh, looking online because LP from Run the Jewels said mm-hmm. he was watching Dexter and he wanted people's opinion. And this is right when I was getting towards the end. And I got I looked on the comments and a lot of comments that don't watch after episode four, the John Lithgow one. Uh, it sucks after that. And I completely, a lot of people said that. And a lot of people said episode or season four was their favorite season. I, I didn't even think that was the case for me either. But uh, I love the show. Camus loved the show. Uh, it was eight seasons. Each season, I think it was 12 episodes. That's 12 hours. I don't know that kind of math. I don't think that kind of math can be figured out. It's impossible. But it was a long time. So we watched that for a couple months. Got to the end. And was pretty disappointed with the ending. You know yeah, I mean? and I, I remember, like, when we were talking, I was going to tell you something about Dexter, about, like, what the Internet thought. And you're like, no, nope, save it. I don't want right. to know. And that was, and spoiler alert, if people, I mean, we already kind of said it, but it's, like, <laughs> widely known that the, the way Dexter ended is one of the worst endings of all time. Right. It is not great. People fucking hated it. Um, yeah. Listen, I love the show, and for the most part, like, a show has to do some real bullshit um, for me to <laughs> just, like, give up, like, in the middle of it. So, usually, even if it gets super bad, I, like, got to finish it just to finish it, you know, just to close that to close that chapter. So, like, when it started getting bad, and, like, I still, like, kind of enjoyed it just because, like, the first so many, you know, four or five seasons were so great, and you're yeah. invested in these characters. But, like, when, you know, when it is like that, you're just like, ah. Like, I'm definitely <laughs> disappointed, but, yeah, it fucking sucked, man. It was not yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, and I remember, uh, and I'm like that with everything, whether it's a documentary, a show, a movie. I don't, I'll figure it out on myself. I never go ahead and read ahead and see what happened or research what happened. Like, I just wanted it to be fresh, man. So I know you were like, you want to talk? And I said, no, I, I won't. I didn't do any research. I didn't do anything. I, I had no idea what the ending was going to be. And I remember me and Camus would talk about because we'd watch, we'd bang out like two episodes and then we'd, you know, talk about them, you know? Yeah. Because uh, it's not a show that you could go to work. Like, oh, did you watch Dexter season six, episode five last night? Yeah, it was fucking crazy. Like, yeah, back in 05. <laughs> yeah, back in 05 I did. So me and Camus would talk about it. And I remember creeping up on that last season eight. And it was, you know, episode nine, 10, 11, and then the finale. I remember I had like six <laughs> six uh, theories of what, what, could, what could possibly happen. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And it, what happened was not, I think, any, <laughs> any of the <laughs> like, six. Of the, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But so overall, I what'd you think about the show? Overall, I really enjoyed it. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I thought I thought it was well done. I liked a lot of the characters on there. Uh, Deb was probably my favorite character. Oh, dude, she. Oh, god, man, I just love the way that she cuts and like one of the things that I'll still say today, and I'm sure I brought it up on the podcast before, but when uh, when they're like, how much? Like, I think it was like, how much coffee did you have? She's like. A, a metric fuck ton or whatever it was, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. it still gets me, man. She, like, like she crushed that character. She uh, absolutely that crushed that character, man. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, she's hot, too. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I throwed her away again, for sure. <laughs> and then uh, I liked Angel. I liked uh, I liked a lot of – I mean, I liked Dexter, too, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of good characters on that show, but I loved it. So, so that was the show me and Camus were watching. And then once – like, if it was just me – then uh, mm-hmm. I would I would bang through Community, right? And you that finished was, Community, right? I finished Community also. So hit me. What probably, are your thoughts, man? Probably probably within two weeks. So it sucks. Yeah, yeah you got to do it sh- fucking quick. <laughs> so I was in the show hole times two. <laughs> so Community, I I really enjoyed it. Yeah, twenty minute episodes. When she said it was solid, I knew it was going to be really good. So I I started yeah. watching it. It took me a few episodes to really get. <clears throat> You know, give, to give attraction for me, but then right. once it did, I really, really enjoyed it. And then, uh, 
I started loving it. I fell in love with it. And then at, the, at, the, at season five, uh, it wasn't the same to me when characters started leaving. Right. And then uh, Donald, Donald Glover left. Chevy Chase left. Uh, spoiler alert. Spoiler, sorry, spoiler I mean, no, alert. No, no, it's, right. it's been out for a while. And, like, the thing is, is I knew that even before I watched it. Okay. I didn't know, like, when they were leaving. Um, yeah. So, that, you know, but I just knew at some point because I knew, like, Chevy Chase, he had, like, a big falling out with everybody, I, like, fucking hated everybody on the show. So I knew he left in a shitty way. I, and I yeah. knew um, – uh, Dog Glover left because I think he left to start up his show Atlanta, which I heard I haven't heard a bad word about that show, um, yeah, yeah. so I, I definitely want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, man, it is fucking fantastic, and I think I told you it was like season four how they just like it's still a great season, but they take that left turn because they got that new showrunner, and yeah. I was just like stick with it because I know how you can get with shows. So I was oh like, yeah, just, just stick with it. It's a fucking shock. Uh, but just like overall, like what'd you think about it? Like just the whole entire series? Yeah, overall, I loved it, man. I thought it was great. It was it was fun to watch. I really liked the characters. Uh, yeah, no, I really really enjoyed it. And then once I got to season six, I, I mean the Abed Troy romance is is tremendous. So once and then Chevy Chase, I, I really ended up liking him because I've been liking Chevy Chase since I was a kid. Yeah, you know. And uh, so but when it got to season six, uh. The new broad from Criminal Minds. Yeah. Smoking hot. I like oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. For she, sure. She's had, like, a great career because she had, like, a small stint on Friends, and then yeah. she crushed through Criminal Minds. Like, I don't know her name in real life, but she's Russian. Um, I don't even. Oh, is she Russian? Yeah, I'm almost positive. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I don't trust him. I don't trust him. <laughs> don't trust him. But, uh, yeah, I mean, she, uh, again, I mean, she came in the late, and she – yeah. Played the part that she needed to play. I, I thought I thought is, she did great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's one thing I love about the show so much, as we said a million times, is they break that fourth wall so much. So the fact oh, that yeah. they, you know, like they just talked about like how her character, you know, like was there and just you know filled the parts <laughs> and shit like right. that was great. And so she did fantastic. Yeah, that last season is is not great. It's by no. far the worst season of the whole series but and, and it was and it took me it took me a while to watch <laughs> this whole season yeah yeah cause uh, i remember but, you th- you you texted me like man i am like slugging through this last, yeah. <laughs> this last season i was like stick with it because the way that they end it was fantastic I, I did love that i love that ending especially compared to dexter but yeah there was no way i wasn't gonna finish it i mean i'm yeah. gonna i'm that far in i'm gonna finish it but uh, yeah, season six. I, I, and I've gone back and watched some of the episodes, but I probably won't watch any episodes from season six again except for the finale, maybe. Right. My biggest thing is because, you know, like through the whole series, they're always talking about six seasons in a movie. And now that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Netflix, I'm hoping that, you know, like it's obviously going to get watched a lot more. So I'm hoping at right. a minimum they come out with a, with a movie. And I think Bro, like, with the movie, it'd be easier to bring in, you know, Donald Glover and stuff like that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think you have to. I'm still waiting for the Office movie, dude. I don't understand what the fuck the holdup was with that. This is it's what America needs. It, it might be what the world <laughs> needs is the Office movie. I don't yeah. understand why that hasn't happened yet. I don't I don't get it. Dude, the fucking perverse world community, the movie and Office movie drop in the same year. Oh, man. Maybe, you know. That'd be tremendous. Yeah. So anyway, si- that, so since then, I watched a couple episodes of Atlanta. Okay. And I I think it is tremendous. We just haven't been watching as much TV recently. And then I watched a couple after the last Hot Ones last week. I watched a couple episodes of Shit's Creek. Oh, okay. I've heard great things, but I've never watched one episode. It's got great reviews, and it's pretty good. Uh, I'll probably keep watching it, but yeah. I'm not going to recommend it until I – or I won't recommend it or not, non-recommend it until I watch more of it, but that's pretty good. What yeah. have you been watching, homie? Well, like as I said on the cast before, I was going to watch Community, and then I was going to jump into Money Heist. And, that's uh, right. Which, I, which the thing is, is Money Heist has been on, like, in my Netflix queue for the longest fucking time. And the reason why is because it's about uh, a bank robber. And I absolutely love movies. I love series. I love everything based around, like, Big heists, big robberies, especially bank robberies. Oh, yeah, I dude. don't know. I just love it. I always have. 
And I started it up uh, last week. There's, as of right now, there's four seasons. Um, season four just dropped back in April. The first season has 13 episodes, and then seasons two through four have eight episodes. So it's not that long, 45 okay. to 50 minute episodes. I almost stopped watching the show within the first four minutes of season one, episode <laughs> one. And the reason why, um, I didn't put it together. I did okay. no research because I don't like to research shows because I don't want to see spoilers. Yeah, I, I do so, the same thing. I, a lot of times I won't watch a trailer. If I'm yeah. like, oh, we're going to watch the movie anyway. Let's not watch the trailer because they'll show half all the good parts. Right, yeah, but right. Go ahead. So this <laughs> show, um, it takes place in Spain, and it's about a group of people that they break into the Spanish men. I'm not ruining anything. This is all like a fun <laughs> percent. So they break into the Span, uh, yeah, the Spanish men, and they just uh, are essentially going to rob it by printing their own money. And they flash back to where this group of people spent five months in a house training for this. Okay. What I didn't realize is this is a Spanish show. So it's dubbed over in English, so the oh, ma- like no. it doesn't match up at all. And I <laughs> oh. had no clue. Like the original title of the show is La Casa de Papel, and I'm sorry for all our <laughs> Spanish speakers out there, but it's like House uh, of Paper. Or- it might be Portuguese. <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't fucking know. I but think in Spain. It, I think in Spain. I, I think they speak Portuguese. Yeah, it shows you how cultured I am. But you Jeez, get what I'm saying. It, yeah, <laughs> it's fucking dubbed over, and I had no idea, and I almost fucking quit. Like I texted the degenerate like within the first four minutes. I was like, I might stop watching because I don't know if I can handle this. But <laughs> I'm like, let me at least push through this first episode, and yeah. because I love the high aspect of everything so much and they yeah. pull you into it like right away so like at minute like 10 15 like they are like getting into it it like it grabbed me now every oh, time really? i go to watch it every night like i think i just started this up on monday today's friday i'm okay. almost done with season one like the third i have like three episodes left i'll probably finish it this weekend okay. i i do really like the show now the thing is I know I would absolutely love the show if, one, I spoke Spanish or Portuguese or whatever the fuck it's in, yeah, I and I could understand it. But, it like, the dub, it takes away from the acting. Like, one of the characters, like, in the dubbed over, when they make him laugh, it's so fucking bad that you just want to, like, punch a baby. Like, it's do like... They, is it, do they have, like, Spanish or Portuguese accents? Uh, no, it's e- no, it's English. Like you, like we're talking oh, now. Yeah, that's, so, that's like that fucking bad dub of uh, Train to Busan I watched. But it was right. probably way less professional than this. This is probably way better right. dubbing. And, yeah, and the thing is, you aren't lost. You don't get lost at all. Like I think that you know yeah. the translation. You don't really lose anything as far as the story goes. But one right. thing I love about shows is like watching the act. Like let me give you an example. So there was like when you know parts are supposed to be funny, they just yeah. aren't funny. So, like I told you, they, um, they flash back into the house uh, yeah. five months before they break into the mint. And right. there was one part where, like, there's two chicks on the team, and they, you mm. know, they're, like, you know, they're <laughs> they're both pretty hot. And they're, okay. you know, they're, like, drinking tequila, and they're, like, all dressed up in their room and stuff. And they're yeah. just, like, partying, and, like, the music's going and stuff. And how the team got together, they don't use real names. There's one guy, and he, his name is the professor, and that's just what they call him. And he has okay. these rules, you know, like don't date each other, or, you know, like all this all this other bullshit. And so they're, they're in their party, and the music's going, and, like, you know, the music's bumping, and they're, like, doing the slow-mo, and they're wearing, like, you know, slutty clothes. They got glasses on, oh. and they're, like, you know, kind of, like, you know, are they going to end up having, like, a lesbian thing together? You know, <laughs> stuff like that. You know the scene I'm talking about. And then, yeah. like, the like the door opens, and then it's, like, one of those, like, record scratch moments where everything just stops. Okay. And he's like, what are you doing? He's like, it's three in the morning. We have class in like five <laughs> hours. And they're like, yeah. He goes, we're going over explosives, which, <laughs> which is pretty funny. He's like, get back yeah. to sleep, which like, you know, that's supposed to be a super funny scene, but because the words don't match up and it's just like, you just miss out on like those moments. 
But again, like I would, I would definitely suggest it if something like that doesn't bother you. I thought I wouldn't be able to get over it, but again, because I love high stuff so much, that brought me in. I really am enjoying the show, and it's not that long. And I also kind of want to see, like, I believe that show is still going on in Spain. So, like I said, the okay. latest season just dropped in like April. So, okay. and again, like, get through these thirteen episodes, and then the rest are, you know, only eight episodes long. So it won't take me long to get through, but I, that's what I'm watching now. I'm going to call money heist. I am enjoying it, but it just does. It's I just not loving it. Like how I thought I would. And I yeah. know I would, if I spoke the language or if it was in English. And I just thought that was so like it literally been in my queue probably for like a year and a half, two years. I just been pushing it off, looking forward to it. I'm like, Oh, it's going to be great. Look, I know I'm going to love it. And then the first four minutes, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me like i britted myself you know what i mean yeah, did, you britted yourself for sure <laughs> it's, i fucking just uh i couldn't believe it but um yeah that's all i'm watching uh as of right now and i think uh after i get done with that there's uh a harley quinn like animated like okay. tv show that i'm gonna watch uh the, gen- the, the degenerate told me about and uh, harley quinn is voiced by uh, Kaylee Cuoco, she's penny off of Big Bang Theory, and oh, I'm um, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, they, uh, I mean, they like cuss and everything, and he says it's absolutely phenomenal. And okay. it's getting ready. I think August first or August second or something like that. They're going to be on. Uh, it's going to move over to HBO Max, so you'll be able to watch it there. Um, okay. So that's what I'm going to jump into after this. I think there's two seasons out for that, and I, again, I think it's half hour episodes or something. So I'll be able to blow through that. So I'm pretty pumped to see some animated like Batman universe stuff after I get through money heist here. Yeah, for sure, man. Anyway, I got a couple questions and a couple comments. Yeah. Uh, do you think you would like the show better if you could find it where it's in whatever language it is in subtitles? I don't think so because I had thought about that. Um, and I don't mind shows like that. I just, I don't know if I would because if it was a movie, one hundred percent yes, I think okay. so. But as like a series with so many episodes, I don't think I would. But then again, it's not like the reading part. Um, yeah, I just I don't know. Like something tells me that like with a long series and being all subtitled like that, I would. Yeah, that's but, a lot. That's a lot of reading. Right, but I would get the full acting part of. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, like there's just one character, and the, and, and, the voiceover and the, guy. Go ahead. Yeah, and the and the emotions. I think, like when yeah. you hear people laugh, or even just the tone in their voice, even if you don't understand the language, you would it, it would match up better with with the role. Than, yeah, way better. So like dog. maybe that might like because I could like yeah. I do feel like there's some of these actors that are really good, even like with this like voice this dub shit. So okay, um, that's a great question though. Yeah, and then uh. I because I haven't watched Parasite yet, and I heard it was tremendous. But mm-hmm. because of the subtitles, I just kind of been pushing it off. Have you seen that? I have not. No. Okay, I do want to see that. And then uh, one of the better horror movies I've seen in the last two years is called Veronica, and it's on Netflix, and it's in Spanish. But I thought it was tremendous. So if anybody likes horror movies and they're looking for one, check out Veronica. And then yeah, I love I'm, a good horror movie. Oh yeah, dude. So, um, you say horror or horror? Yeah, horror. Oh, hell yeah, me too. <laughs> but, dude, I'm with you with heist movies. I'm big into all heist movies. Uh, I, I still think about doing heists all the time. I was just talking about this about a week ago at work. I think it's part of the Army shit and just being tactical. Yeah. And I'll map it out in my head. I think it select teams and people in my, in, in my head. Like, okay, so I need... I'll be, yeah, you know, I'll be the, I'll be like the, I don't know, the, the sergeant of the team, mm-hmm. right? And then uh, I'll need, depending on what the op is, I'll need like two shooters, a medic, a radio guy, maybe a demo guy. To, and that that's rare. That depends on the operation. You always gotta have uh, one on standby though. But you gotta have one on standby just in case you need to breach. But then yeah, I usually have a medic, a driver. And sometimes the driver can be the radio guy at the same time if you can multitask. You should mm-hmm. be able to do that. Because after you park, you're just sitting there. So you're a lookout slash radio guy. You could scan the, the traffic channels, the tactical channels of the police department. And then, uh, but yeah, I, I think about hitting hitting a, a place, doing it, getting out, and then getting away. I would never do a heist uh, just because 
I would never do that to to anybody. You know what I mean? Right. Like I, I couldn't wave my gun in somebody's face for money and then know yeah. that that forever they're going to be horrified and yeah, have like nightmares. Yeah, fucked up, PTSD and all that yeah. shit. Yeah, that's because why I they're, right. Because if they're just working <laughs> there to get a paycheck. <laughs> right. If it was the actual, like, I don't know, like Jeff Bezos or, or somebody like that, like, I'll rob mm-hmm. the fuck out of him. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? definitely. I might even shoot him or, you know, somebody <laughs> like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just to or scratch like, that itch, you know? Yeah, just to, <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck, fuck, you know, I don't care. <laughs> But if it's just some young lady that's trying to make her way through college working at a bank, I can't wave a gun in her face. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then I and I don't want to shoot anybody either, unless uh, uh, I really don't want to shoot any, anybody either. But I would <laughs> I would do it. I wouldn't shoot like a clerk, but I'd shoot a cop. Yeah, you know what I mean. But it'll probably never get to that. I I always think about the adrenaline rush and how exciting it is to plan it and to do it, but. Well, dude, man, it's 2020. We're only halfway through the year, so shit keeps going, man. We might see a total collapse. You know, the Pentagon just fucking announced UFO vehicles and shit like oh, that. Oh, I saw today. that, bro. So, yeah, so who knows, man? You might get your chance, and we might get our chance. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, you're on my team. You know that. Oh, yeah, of course. Hell yeah. You know, if I'm setting up a squad, you could be a shooter. Uh, Fuck yeah. Yeah, dude. Hey, and then uh, did you a, a few months ago there was a Netflix movie that came out and I can't remember the name of it, but talking about heist maybe bring it up. It was with Ryan Reynolds. It's like the six. Uh, yes, we watched it. Yes. Okay, uh, you did watch that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Okay. Uh, good, I good. can't remember the name of it either, but yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty good. It was, it's, it's, you know, it's, Ryan it's, Reynolds it's, is great and everything. Yeah, he's great and everything. It's something six, and it's not necessarily a heist movie, but it's about a team that that operates and, and that was crazy shit. So that, when you were talking about heist, that made me bring it up. And then the only other movie that I wanted to recommend is called Palm Springs and it's on Hulu. Dude, I've, I've heard great things. Uh, again, the degenerate, like he had told me about it. He heard it's absolutely fantastic. It's Andy Samberg. Um, yep. and, uh, he just was like, D- I don't want to tell you much about it. I did get part of it ruined for me on another podcast that I was listening to, so I definitely won't bring it up. But he goes, if I could literally, like, um, not really, if I could, oh, the fuck, the word's leaving me. Uh, just recommendation, there it is. Um, if yeah. I could give any type of recommendations right now, series movie goes, I'm telling you, Palm Springs is it. So I've heard nothing yeah. but great things. Absolutely. Absolutely, check it out. Yeah, it's there's nothing. But it's 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 funny. It, it it gets a little serious. It's got a great a great you know uh, spin on it. It's a spin that's been done before, but it's it's unique and uh, it's it's also yeah. it's charming. It's a it's it's solid. I, I'm gonna probably watch it again. But uh, yeah. That uh, other than that, I haven't watched much else. I watched The Outpost, which is a war movie that I read the book a few years ago, and I'm looking forward to watching Greyhound with Tom Hanks. Yeah. Whenever the boys are ready to sit down and watch a movie. And other than that, I've been watching UFC because they've been having UFC fights every, like, four days. And they've been yeah, we'll watching tomorrow right? night. Yeah, fucking so. crazy. Crazy <laughs> shit. Well, we are at the hour mark. Um, it's been a little bit together. Um, I still say we go a little bit longer. Um, I did say that we would answer some questions. It's been a long oh, yeah. time. I know some of these uh, are in there. So, like, if you're down, I'm down. Um, Fuck it, right. The nasties are down. You know, we haven't been hitting it hard a lot lately. So let's, uh, let's jump into those. Um, so we got Vito sent one in. Um, so let me read it here. It's uh, He said, and again, guys, send us in questions. We'll answer anything you have. Doesn't matter what you ask. We will answer it. Uh, you want advice or if you're just curious, let us know. Yeah. Fucking Nasty and friends at gmail.com. So it says, if you had to choose between two professions okay. for the rest of your lives, each would make the same amount, uh, minimum wage with no overtime. So you have to okay. choose between two jobs, minimum wage, no overtime. Would you okay. choose president of the United States or coal miner and why? Oh, that's a great question. God damn. Yeah, that's a solid question. So, again, you have to pick between a coal miner, president of the United States, minimum wage, no overtime. Which would you choose and why? You want to go first or you want me to go first? It doesn't matter to me. Uh, I watched a couple – Oh fuck! This is tough, man. I I think for me it would be president. Just really? Because, yeah. I did not just, see that coming. Yeah, just because uh, I could, I could like like for me it's never been, it's never been about money, right? 
Right. So I'm not saying I'm a, a smart guy. I do not have any – I don't even have an associate's degree, but I'm actually looking at it. I got four classes left, and I can get an associate's degree in fire science technology, and then from there I might move on and get a second skill. But for me, it's always been about uh, – yeah, I, I guess about service. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. 20 years in the military, the fire department, uh, I could do another job, I'm sure, and make a lot more money. And I would probably hate it, and I would probably – I would not enjoy going to work like I do. I love uh, the job that I have. I don't see me doing anything else. Like, if I couldn't be a firefighter, I don't know exactly what I would do, other than a podcaster. Other than a podcaster. Right. Yeah, which we know a, that's a solid-ass, yeah. like, job yeah. for you. A, a coal miner, I, I think, would be pre- pretty cool because you're working hard, but you're going to die young, man. I watched a couple documentaries right. about coal miners. As, as a president – I know it would be a, a shit job, but at least I could try to make America. Because you, know, you also know Are about you gonna me. Are you going to say like, it? Are you going to say it? You're trying to make America great again? <laughs> not, not again. <laughs> I would never try to make America like it used to be, but I, I think I would try to make it better. You know what I mean? Right, yeah, 100%. I, you could do it for sure. And you know, you know the type of person I am. I like to bring people together. I like yeah. to uh, – so I, I would – I, and no other question I would ever say I want to do any political stuff or, or be a president. I know for a fact I could be a better president than Trump. I think he's in the worst person they could have ever picked to be the president, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. for a lot of different reasons. He's he's probably the worst thing that's happened to America, probably worse than the COVID, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think he's a real bad person. But, no, I think I, I, would, I would pick president. But the only thing is with that, they would look into my past. They would watch. They would listen to all uh, however many hours of Nasty and Friends podcast <laughs> yeah. we have, and they would dissect that, and they would talk about, you know, I just talked about how I like planning robbing people. <laughs> uh, right. So I don't think that would work. But that's that would probably be my pick. Coal miner, I think, would be a sweet gig. Uh it would suck, but you're at least you're working. You're not in an office. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've watched a bunch of documentaries. There's a really good one on Netflix. It, it, it used to be it gets into the union stuff. It gets to the past and how fucking shady of a deal it is. And it's fucking it's terrible, dude. It's awful. Yeah. All right, go ahead. That's what a solid choice, um, man. It's tough. It's tough. Like I think I've gone back and forth so much just from listening to you talk. Like knee jerk reaction, I say coal miner because I one I know nothing about politics. Or I know very little about politics. Um, and it's just I feel like that, at least like with coal mining, like it's like a it's like a family. You're like a team in there. And I've been Absolutely. missing, you know, I've been missing a, a team thing. Like obviously I'm like on a team at work. It's just not the same. But it's like team oh, yeah. sports. Like, you know, that's one of the biggest things that I miss being in the military working as a team. And so that would definitely fill a big hole for me being Absolutely. in there. But the thing that gets me is you're going to age like, I mean, with both jobs, you're going to age crazy either yeah. way. But at least like with being the president, once you get on the other side, side of it i feel yeah. you know what i mean it's it's better like i just think if, as a coal miner you're just there till you die at age what mid 30s or whatever it is depending on how oh, young yeah. you get into it you could get the black lung i mean there's so many things that could go bad you're breathing horrible yeah. air quality you worry about collapses explosions and then yeah uh it's just it's, it's real real shady and you're destroying the planet <laughs> you're just destroying the planet Right. I don't know. Yeah, hundred percent. So I think like if I were to choose, like I, I, I think I'm with you. I think I go president yeah. because you know it's set for, and you don't have to run for office a second time. So it's four years max. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Four years max. You're gonna have people, and I hate being hated by anybody. Uh, right. But I mean, you're gonna have people hate you one way or the other. But I think at heart, I'm a really good person, and I think that you know that would come through, and you just try to leave the place better than when you showed up. And so I think I think that's what I go through. Age for those four years, take it, and yeah. then you could say, "Hey, I was president." How many people could say that? You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then you're getting a minimum wage, but yeah, you're still getting kickbacks from fucking everybody. You'll, you'll make some money doing that. Right. I think the president would. It's not that hard of a fucking job. You know what I mean? Yeah, they don't I, really I, do a lot. Of things you know, anyway, they can't. I don't think, nobody ever can stick to their word with what they say they're going to do. No, so. they don't. I think. I think uh, the president we have now makes it harder on himself mm-hmm. because he's an idiot. You know what I mean? But I think like, if, if I'm the president, all you have to do is surround yourself with experts mm-hmm. in their field, whether it's science, military, 
uh, <laughs> affairs overseas, war stuff, uh, economy. Like you, you surround yourself with the best people, and then you just listen. <laughs> you listen to them. Yeah, yeah. That's just all try you have to, to do. make the best best decision you can. And you know, goddamn yeah. well, if I'm president, I'm bringing you in somewhere. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I put you know, I you're... put you somewhere in that cabinet. I don't give a fuck what it is. I appreciate that, brother. I'd be right there with you, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. But yeah, you just saw that question. Yeah, you surround yourself with the best people in every industry, and then uh, you just try to make America better. And you, you, it's about the people, mm-hmm. and that's the thing. Like, if I'm making minimum wage, like I don't care about kickbacks. I don't care about making billionaires more wealthy. I'm, I'm worried about. I'm there for the people, so I don't give a shit about what the banks think or other people think. I'm there for the people. Education, healthcare, that kind of shit. Right. Uh, they'd kill me, probably. <laughs> yeah. So you'd be assassinated, but I'd it'd probably be all right. Be all right, all right though. <laughs> yeah, I'd be fine with it. Whatever. Yeah. Um, so, so Spicy Brown's running. Uh, what's your campaign slogan? Um, oh, shit, dude. I don't. All right, let me tell you mine. Cause, what's yours? Uh, what's I, yours? I have mine. Mine, mine would be Pag Nasty. Life is simple. Don't be a dick. Smoke <laughs> weed. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking money, man. I doesn't get much better than that. No, I don't think so. I thought it was pretty good. And then, obviously, if we're going to try to win, we we'll probably drop the smoke weed part. But, yeah, it's just, I'd be packed nasty. Life is simple. Don't be a dick. If I can't get votes and win off that, I don't know what I could. You know what I mean? Did you, honestly, you'd be a better president than Trump or Biden or Kanye <laughs> or whoever else is running. For sure, man. Because you care about the people, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I love that. And, we, and and for people listening, we tried to run in 2016. We had sure <laughs> We did. Everything. We did. Pag Nasty and Brown, 16. <laughs> fucking, I can't I think, fucking believe we've been doing the podcast that long, man. Just a couple people bought a so shirt. Easy. Nobody even fucking voted for us. On the thing, so. <laughs> yeah. Sons of bitches. Sons of bitches. <laughs> That's great. Well, if you can't think of a uh, campaign slogan, think of, we'll hit it up on the next one for sure. We'll go with yours, dude, and I'll be your VP. All right. I do. I like it. I like yeah. it. That's what we'll do. I love yeah. it. Pagnasty and Brown. Life is simple. Don't be a dick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, the best. We got to gotta get shirts made. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, we'll be the only ones who buy them. Um, all right. <laughs> <That's> all right. <laughs> so, uh, second question is from my cousin Kayla. Uh, she's, uh, you know what? I got to give major shouts out to her because she doesn't send in questions very often, which is okay. still a hundred percent more than what anybody else does besides <laughs> like Vito and Joey, I think. Right. But right. she always sends in solid ass questions. Remember, she was the one who did like the cry hot sauce or sweat mayonnaise. Like yeah, yeah, sent, yeah, yeah. She sent in. Um, this is another uh, another solid ass question. So shouts out to Kayla. Um, it says, "Would you rather be able to remember everything you see or hear?" And she also said, "Love the QC episode." So thanks for listening too, by the way. Oh yeah. Great. So would you rather be able to remember everything you see or remember everything you hear? I'm trying to think of the pros and cons of, of both. Right. Uh, because if if you remember everything that you hear, there's going to be definitely nobody's going to be able to like bullshit you in a story, like right. you know, or like try to twist shit around. Like, no, you said this on this date at this time. Yeah. Like, I I know for sure. I'm probably gonna go. With, I'm probably gonna go with every. I, I remember everything that I hear. Mm. Why? Well, I think part of it is because of uh, like my job on the fire department. Okay. And I see like a lot of horrible things, and I hear horrible things too. Mm-hmm. And and I there's a lot of calls that I've gone on where I still see them, and I still hear them like people's like faces, like when a loved one is dead, like on the floor right there, and there's yeah, they're screaming, and and they're in like the worst day of their life. I still see people's faces or see certain dead people. Yeah, uh, the way this took a turn. <laughs> yes, this is, sorry, Kayla. This is I'm sorry, Kayla. Hey, no, you gotta you gotta live your truth, man. So 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 I I still see those, and I there's calls that I've made, fuck, twelve years ago, where I still see uh, there's certain things in my head that I probably won't ever forget. But I tr- I try I try to forget them, and I don't think about them, and I drink a lot, and that helps me. But if I've 100, but there's a lot of things that I just, I don't talk about. I 
uh, block out. Uh, so they're there. The thing is you stuff them way down. Mm-hmm. Eventually they're going to come back up, but hopefully by the time some of those things come back up, I'll have dementia or I'll be dead and it doesn't matter. Right. But if I remembered everything I see and I could never like shut those things off, yeah. I think it would be a lot harder for me than, than my life than uh, my mind already is. So, so what's think- the advantage to remembering everything you hear? Like what? Like, because obviously, is it more that you just don't want to remember the shit that you see and that's why you're choosing hearing? Or is there, like, something about hearing? Yeah, there's no bonus uh, about remembering everything I hear. It's just I don't want to remember everything Mm -hmm. that I see. But uh, Camus would probably want me to remember it. My wife would probably be like, yeah, I want him to remember everything he hears so that (laughs) I don't forget shit she tells me or stories or any of that shit. Yeah, I, I think it would be more helpful you know what i mean because if i remembered uh somebody screaming from a bad call i went on mm-hmm. it's still not as bad as remember seeing yeah, people's less, faces in absolute jarring. terror yeah right, and shit like that so and then i didn't mean to get that deep kayla i'm, I'm oh, sorry no, no, I, I, oh hey i love it man i just fucking thought it I, was great <laughs> i take the i take the question serious like it's a real yeah, question that's what we do and, and, that, so that's where my and that's where my head went like a hundred percent so all right what do you got brother yeah you sick fuck um i think <laughs> that i would go i think i'd go with scene man i don't know man there's like when i read the question like i just um i just visually just like i just remember you know seeing my kids for the first time yeah. seeing you know jpegs like in her wedding dress like seeing just like the mountain and stuff and like kind of where i go back and forth is like I the hearing thing that gets me is you know how much I love comedy and to be able to remember every single bit word for yeah. word for word is right. kind of like that might it's just so hard but I think in the end I just go like with seeing because I also love like seeing people laugh like their physical oh yeah like laugh. and I don't know if I've ever told this, this on the podcast but um at one, like I remember when I was like ten years old, like we were watching George Carlin. And I'll make this story the shorter version, of it, but we were watching George Carlin uh, when I was ten years old, which means Vito would have been like six. My mom was away, <laughs> and we were watching it with my dad. And yeah. I remember laughing so hard because he was like cussing a lot, and he had like a five minute bit <laughs> about farting. And at ten, that's <laughs> really all you've accomplished, you know? For sure. But for sure. I specifically remember at one point. He was just crushing it. I was, like, looking around the room for air. I could not breathe. I was laughing so fucking hard. And I just remember, like, looking at my dad and yeah. him literally wiping away tears because he was laughing so hard. And I remember looking over and seeing, like, uh, Mikey and Vito, like, rolling on the ground laughing because they, like, couldn't catch their breath. And I just remember, like, specifically telling myself like I want to feel this way forever and like in that memory it's what I seen in that moment because of how he made us feel you know what I mean like it's so vivid in my memory because of what I seen so I think like the way my brain works um is like I make memories more of just like how like people's like facial reactions or you know shit like that. So I think I go with scene, man. I think in the end, um, just remembering everything seen. But I haven't definitely have not seen the horrors that you have seen either. So I think that's probably like you know maybe where we like break off at. So yeah, so I definitely go with see. I think after talking through it. Yeah, I love that, man. I love that we have different answers, and I, I, I thought about that too because I love beautiful things too, like oceans and mountains and seeing my daughter being born. Naked I mean, women. Didn't no, mean to titties. drop that while you were talking about your daughter, my apologies. <laughs> yeah, well, that was pretty – we'll edit that out. <laughs> no, but uh, – no, it's the same thing. I mean, most of, most of what I see is, is beautiful, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's what I try to focus on. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think I, I, I'll, I'll stay with my answer. And then I love your answer, man. Your answer was beautiful, man. I could, I could imagine – that scene with your dad and your brothers. That's right. really beautiful. Yeah. Fucking fantastic. Dude, great <laughs> questions, man. Solid ass questions. That's why we want you guys to send in questions and we absolutely love doing them. Um, oh, yeah. It'll probably be a while before we get back to them. So definitely keep sending them in because <laughs> we want to do like, I don't know about you. Um, and you kind of mentioned it earlier. Hot ones has picked back up for their 11th or 12th season, whatever it is. And it yep. always reminds me of like, 
when we did it together. I 100% want to do another Hot Ones tribute um, just because, like, being on the podcast and, like, going through, like, that fucking hot sauce and being, like, that quote-unquote, like, high yeah. together, trying to figure it out, trying to answer these fucking questions. Like, it's, I, I absolutely love it. And we need questions for that. So definitely oh, for, for the sure. Men. And I, I'm going to speak for the both of us. I think you would be 100% down for that for sure. Oh, yeah. And I got a, I got a quick story that, that just yeah. reminded me of that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, got, I got lucky last weekend – uh, because my, and it sounds terrible, but my so my daughter got sick. <laughs> she had a she had a, she had a sleepover. Uh-huh. They stayed up, eat junk food, doing whatever. I was at work. I got off the next morning, and then I we were, she was hanging out with her friends. Her friends left. My daughter never said anything was wrong. She said she just she looked fine, whatever. But she was in her room, and uh, so last Christmas she sent me a bottle of Aardvark hot sauce. Oh, yeah, it's fucking phenomenal. <laughs> uh, so I've been like, well, you haven't tried it yet. We got to try it. So I went in her room, and I was like, hey, are you doing this today or not? The hot sauce. And I looked at her face, and she's like pale. She looks like shit. And I'm like, oh, I, what's going on? She's like, oh, I, I'm sick. I don't feel good. I got a migraine, and I feel pukey. She ended up puking all night. <clears throat> Damn. I, I, so I called it. The next day was Saturday. I called in six Saturday. Uh <clears throat> so the day I called in sick and I'm sure everybody's like this motherfucker. He's just at home. It was the day it was 95 degrees. Uh, the temperature was, uh, the feel like temperature was well over a hundred. Oh my God. It's a Saturday at work. They were busy. And then that night oh. in the projects, they had a, a mass shooting. Holy so shit. it it was a hundred people gathered at like a late, late night party. A van pulled up, opened the door, shot. Eight people got shot. Four people got transported, and the other four, I, I guess, got transported via private auto. <laughs> so, so then I told my daughter, you know, a couple of days later, I'm like, well, uh, it sucks that you got sick, but it was probably a good day for you to get sick for me. <laughs> yeah. But then I told her, I said, I would have much rather went to work. Than, I hate to, You hate to see your kids sick. Yeah, she that's was, the worst. She was sick Friday, Saturday. It started feeling better Sunday, but I missed that hot day and I missed the mass shooting. Uh, so anyway, uh, today, I, cause, oh, so anyway, that day I went in her room mm-hmm. to see if she wanted to eat the hot sauce, <laughs> and she was sick. So today she finally tried it. So oh, we got yeah. some Ritz, we got some Ritz crackers out. We got the Aardvark hot sauce. And then I got the Thor's Hammer, which is the number seven Ooh. hot sauce from this season of Hot Ones. Yeah, shouts out Volcanic Peppers. Shouts out Volcanic Peppers for sure. And we tried them, and uh, she she tried them both and didn't cry or anything. She's oh, awesome. hell yeah. She's a goddamn soldier. That's great. <laughs> she, she is, for sure, man. Yeah, yeah. There's just something about, like, I know we talked about it a million times, but something about going through that with somebody is fucking great. So we 100% have to get back to it at least some point when we get back into the new BDC studios, for sure. Yeah, yeah, bro. And don't forget, we still have those death nuts. Yeah, pack, yeah. We got to eat that. So. Fuck yeah, maybe we can do that. So we need questions. What I'm getting at is we definitely need questions. So send in questions. can literally be about anything, guys. We will answer it. We'll take it serious, and we will answer it. You may not like it. You probably won't, <laughs> but, you know, you definitely <laughs> need to send in the question. So um, yeah. is there anything else before we jump in? We're about uh, just shy of 90 minutes here. So, uh, <laughs> No, nah, dude, it's, it's been a while. So there's a bunch of stuff on my list. I'm just going to yeah. push it back to the next time we podcast. Hopefully it, we're in BDC studios. Hopefully it's not quarantine call eight, but who knows what's going to happen. School's yeah, and, and, and you know, and if we can't get together, we'll just definitely keep doing these quarantine calls. They seem to be working out. People are enjoying them. I'm loving it. I feel like, uh, you know, the last two are by far our best ones. Um, I, I still think about your fucking alligator story. Like, it's <laughs> still, it still fucking cracks me up, man. I oh, love man. it. I think this has been a solid-ass episode. Um as far as that goes. So um, let's get into our shout out and fuck yous. Do you want to go first? you want me to go first? I'll go first, dude, because I... the way you uh, began this podcast, QC7 Season 3, I thought was magic, my brother. So I, I want you to it. end it as well. Oh, and shit. So, so I have a lot of <laughs> a lot of shout outs 
and just a couple of fuck yous. So my shouts out are my daughter Elena. Mm. I want to shout out JPEG. Happy I birthday. Shout, yep. I want to shout out Cam. I want to shout out that WAP fuck Vito. I want to shout out Danny Glover. Shout out the degenerate, and then shout out Kayla for sending in uh, bomb ass questions. My only two fuck yous are to uh, fuck the police, <laughs> and then fuck Dexter season eight episode twelve. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's solid. Um, I got some shouts out. I was going to shout out, obviously, people who sent in questions. So, Kayla, Vito, thanks again, man. Both solid ass questions. Great conversation yeah. from it. Um, shout out to you, man. Um, I, like, I know we got serious there for like a solid half hour or not, but I'm glad that you made it through the run. It's scary shit. I'm 100% glad that you're back to 100%. So, make sure you're taking care of yourself, you know, as much Thank as you, you can. Um, shouts out to Pedialyte because they're the fucking best. Uh, <laughs> I love getting done from a run and just fucking, you know, pounding some Pedialyte. It's the, it's the best dude. hydration out there. Hashtag not an ad. The slide into Why a they're not a sponsor, I have no idea. Same no thing with Tito's. Yeah, yeah. It's probably because they've listened to the podcast. <laughs> um, uh, I also have shouts out Run the Jewels. They're just fucking great, oh, man. I've been oh, bumping yeah, them a lot lately, which is great. Um, I got uh, just a couple fuck yous. Uh, fuck you to the Rona. Like, that's just the standard during quarantine calls. Yeah, fuck for you, sure. Fuck you, Rona. And then I have fuck you, mosquitoes, because it speaks for itself. So, um, <laughs> you guys follow us, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, we're also on that shit Facebook. Um, at at Nash Friends, send in your questions, please. Um, we have put in a blast doing this. We're going to get into BDC Studios again, 100%. We got shit planned. We got guests. We got stories lined up that I haven't heard that I only know <laughs> part of it. And I can't wait. We got medical stuff on deck for you. It's going to be amazing. I'm telling you, the audio probably won't be any better than it's ever been. So you're just going to have to <laughs> fucking deal with it. So unless you guys want to Venmo us some money, maybe we're looking to get some better audio. Doesn't mean we can <laughs> fucking edit it any better but that's what's going to happen so i definitely want to thank everybody for giving us a listen like all 10 of you we appreciate it we know we got loyal fans out there we get text <laughs> we get every, everything at us so i definitely want to thank you um you guys just fucking if you got any uh we are going to do that hot ones tribute so if you got any um i think that's a good good thing if you got any hot sauces you want us to try definitely let us know and we'll pick them Love up that. and we'll We'll throw it in there. So put that in with your question. So, Love that. Um, yeah. There's, there, yeah, there's a million hot sauces out there. Uh, you know, we can't wait to do it. Uh, spicy, fucking love you, dog. I'm glad you're safe. Um, you know, these are some of my favorite things to do is get on the, on the quarantine calls with you and just, you know, catch up and talk about life. So I appreciate it. Uh, you guys remember, life's simple. Don't be a dick. Right, clip. Motherfucker, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why?